Greetings from the Guild Gamers. I'm Guildmaster Jason. Welcome to Table Talk. So last night, if you guys tuned in, you know that we played Session 9 of Lost Mine of Unders Pack. If you guys remember, the party was making their way through Cragmall Castle in search of the entrance to Wave Echo Cave, where they believed the Forge of Spells was, a forge supposedly capable of crafting magical items. Now, they were in search of this because they knew that the goblins running Cragmall Castle were also in search of it, and historically speaking, goblins wielding powerful magic, probably not the best thing. So when the session started, the party hadn't cleared the castle out yet, but they had already destroyed the bugbear who was running it. The session started with them in what started off as a small combat with the party of eight up against three goblins, one of them already badly injured, and a hobgoblin. So it seemed like an easy combat at first, but one round in, seven more goblins stream into the room. Next round in, eight more goblins stream into the room. By the time it was all said and done, the party had massacred 20 goblins and a hobgoblin. Needless to say, after this battle, they were looking a little rough for wear. So after a long rest, they proceeded to continue making their way around the castle, finding that for the most part it was cleared out at this point, except for one room, and this was the room with a large wooden bar uh, sitting on top of two metal brackets, keeping the door barred from the outside. So very carefully, they lifted this bar, slammed the door open, to which the group was trampled by two owlbears that ran out of the room. Now Varus, the party's drow ranger, immediately uh, started to knock an arrow and aim at one of the owlbears, but against his uh, better judgment, he decided not to, seeing that it appeared they were just looking for an exit. As soon as he let the beast go, he did notice that both of them, they immediately separated going different ways but both just found the near exe nearest exit of the building and evacuated. Now from this point on, uh, they found that inside of this room, there it was just, I mean, waste level almost with just rubble and broken furniture and glass. After lots and lots of searching around this castle, they eventually found that underneath all the rubble and garbage in the bottom of this tower was actually a 4x4 four four trap door uh, in the floor. Um, it didn't appear to be locked so they lifted it up and uh, after a couple of precautionary procedures made their way into the tunnel. They found that it was about a 10 foot drop straight down and then kind of just uh, diagonal downward from there. Um, about a hundred feet in they find this huge ambient wall blocking off where the cavern kind of uh, opens up and they can see that this wall of ambient light there's a silhouette pressed up against it on the same side of the wall as them and it appears to be a dragonborn as they get a little bit closer they realize this dragonborn is surrounded by a dozen corpses all uh, wearing these black robes. After a little bit of precautionary interrogations on both ends, the party and this dragonborn both eventually realized that although neither one really knew why the other wanted into this cavern, they both really wanted to accomplish the same thing in figuring out a way to get past this wall of light. So finally, Alizar, the druid in the party, decides to grab a good berry and just throw it at the wall of light, and he notices it passes right through without a problem. Getting a little curious, Alizar steps up to the wall and places his hand on it and he realizes he doesn't even feel the wall there. Slowly and cautiously he steps forward, steps through the wall without a problem. One by one more of the party members do this until eventually Markon follows them through. Um, Markon being the party's half-elf wizard and <coughs> runs into a solid wall. More of the party members continue through the wall and eventually the same thing happens to the dragonborn. Now, the adventuring party knows that some of Markon's deeds have been less than admirable, and they don't know this dragonborn, but being a black dragonborn, they know 
typically they're not the most trustworthy guys either so they start to realize that maybe it's something about this wall that blocks some sort of bad energies above board that would be any character with an evil alignment so that's about where we ended last night's session and that brings me to the topic of today's table talk is it okay to have evil aligned characters in your party as a dm is it something you should allow now typically the idea behind dungeons and dragons is a group of heroes of various sorts thwarting whatever evil there is in the land and gaining a small horde of treasure along the way or a large horde depending on how successful you are but is it okay to shake it up with an evil character someone who He's not out for the betterment of this small village or settlement. He's out for himself. He wants to become lord of the land and rule with an iron fist. He wants to delve into this dungeon and steal the treasure hoard all for himself. He wants to delve into this ancient forbidden eldritch library and steal all these scrolls so that he can have more arcane knowledge than anyone else. Uh, characters like these. So my answer is this, yes you can have an evil character in your party if it's played correctly. For just a moment let's try and get inside the mind of an evil character, uh, an evil adventuring character we'll say. Being an evil character, he's probably committed a few evil deeds throughout his life or his background we'll say, and he's seen the reaction to doing those things. He's probably learned throughout his life, in order to advance his motives, it's better to hide his actual plan and his actual true self, so to speak, until the point where he can gain the most. So, for this example, I'll take Markon. Markon is a character who, uh, I call him kind of soft evil. He's not evil necessarily in that he wants to see people suffer or... He's not sadistic just for the sake of being sadistic, usually. But Ar Markon is evil in the sense that he's not really interested in the betterment of anyone else. He's very interested in gaining as much arcane knowledge for himself as he can. And uh, as we all know from session one and continuing on throughout the story, when it comes to interrogation, he is absolutely ruthless, uh, which shows that his character lacks some sort of empathy. So for that reason, I decided that Markon was an evil character. Now, despite Markon being an evil character and his less-than-hero nature, he knows that through his adventures with this party, he's gained lots of gold coins, he's gained lots of arcane knowledge, he's picked up uh, scrolls from Sister Gariel. It's This is basically adventuring with this party has done him good things throughout his life. Well, throughout his adventuring career anyways. But even though in the long run Markon's really in it for himself, he realizes that the most beneficial thing to himself is to aid this party. And that is how you properly play an evil character. So of course I have to give a counterexample here. A way to incorrectly play an evil character. Some of you may be familiar with the term murder hobo. Uh, if you've been playing D&D for a while, I'm sure you're familiar with the term if you're not familiar with the term, what murder hobo means is an adventurer who just goes from town to town, killing whoever he likes, uh, not really considering any consequences, just, you know, he hardly fits the role of an adventuring party, uh, hardly fits the role of a hero in any way, and a lot of people see D&D &D as a way as, hey, I can do whatever I want, but whereas they don't realize in most DMs world, this is a living, breathing world where action have consequences just like the real world. The biggest problem with the murder hobo, aside from the fact that it wrecks a campaign, is really just the fact that it's not realistic. I mean, it's not a realistic element of role play because there aren't generally people who go around like Saturday morning cartoons who at their every chance they get they try to thwart the good guys and oh I didn't get them this time, I guess I'll try next time. It's just not a logical thought pattern, and someone who's truly evil, who's lived an evil life, would have learned to be a little bit more conniving about their evil ways. So that's this week's Table Talk. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know we enjoyed playing the session, and I enjoyed sharing my thoughts on evil characters with you guys. If you'd like, please share your thoughts and opinions in the comments section. Until then, game on gamers.